we're going racing. I'm just going to skip all that. And the gate is down. KTM rider will touch and reach the first turn first. That's called a whole shot. I'll walk you through this. That is a curve. Come through the curves here. Got a couple jumps here. Do a couple jumps here. A couple tricks. A little turn here. The number 19 with the lead now. That's going to be Deacon Denno. He finished third in the first moto. So a good start for, for the Deacon. Where is the 33 of the Chattanooga Chew Drew? <laughs> That's Drew Adams. Cheesy dad joke alert there. All right, where are you at, Drew Adams? Probably putting I don't think he's going to answer your question. He's on the motorcycle I'm right now. A little race. focused right now, Kevin, on some other things. And I think I see the 33 off to, there he is, to the our left. left side, rider's right. Rod, you don't need to take a quick break. You can take a long one. You and uh, Wes Kane handling the heavy lifting down to the podium all day long. Well, I was... It's been all Rodney. <laughs> okay, that's what they say. Rodney. <laughs> that's what Wes says as well. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Trust me. It was me. It was all me. Now, Drew Adams now moves into the number two spot. He will not let you lead a lap. Not on my watch, son. Oh, he's got that uh, reel out right now, trying to reel in your leader. The Papil Deacon Pocket Denno. Fisherman. Pulling it in. He cast it. Got the bait stuck on someone's ear. <laughs> right in their pierced ear hook. Oh, wow. He has wow. really closed the gap. Drew Adams, Kawasaki Team Green. Oh, Adams off the side of the racetrack. So that is not he's a good got line. to slow down here to make sure he didn't gain any time. He did not. Woo. So he loses some ground. And it looks like Deacon Denno, if he can get through this Bermuda Triangle, will lead the first lap. This is 85, 10 to 12. Check this out. We've got now more information on that whole shot. Remember how they would only give us the first place guy? That's how they came through all 40 of oh, the That's impressive, right? It helps you out. Hey, did he go down? Where's he at in the start? Oh, I could have looked right there. John Danes and that MyLapse crew awesome. can't knock him. Cannon Hargrove, third. Chase Anderson, fourth. Brody Barth, fifth. Kobe Goff, sixth. White Bass, Landon Gibson is eighth. Luke Lake Campbell, ninth. And Chance Lawton rounds out your top ten as we focus our attention on first moto winner, Drew Adams, who's gathered himself back together. And he's going after the number 19, Double D, Deacon Denno. He looks big on that bike. I'll tell you, pretty tough to navigate this track. You see some of the track maintenance. I know you were talking about it earlier with uh, Matt Walker about how it's shaped up a little differently this year. But... You got to guess, no practice after Monday, so you're kind of guessing what state the track is in. You even saw some, not dozer tracks, but actual tire tracks in that straightaway in front of the Yamaha Mechanics area is from some of the equipment. So everyone kind of learning the track. You were mentioning that it takes a few laps, actually, to see the best laps, the fastest times in each moto as these riders try to get a feel for it. Yeah, it's typically we've seen it about the fourth lap now. The last moto, the guy did it on the eighth lap. He dug deep and put it all wow. together. Clough did it on the eighth lap. But those first few motos, a few motos, it was about lap four where you could string together all the insides, the outsides, the jump combinations. And Adams is starting to figure it out. We're about to have a battle between Deacon Denno and Drew Adams here. Cannon Hargrove continuing to make a name for himself this week. Started the week off with a moto win in the other 12, 10 to 12 class. Said he had never even been in the top 10 before, and that is no fluke. He's running in a podium spot right now in third. Then it is Anderson, Barth, Goff, Bass, Gibson, Campbell, and Lawton. That's your top 10. But here comes the battle. Drew Adams going to take it to Deacon Denno. This is about to get good. I was talking to his parents, and I try to tell my kids this, hoping it will inspire them. But this kid's a self-starter. He is up before mom and dad, sets his watch. He's like waiting on him to take him to practice. He's got his meals my prepped kid does already. That. He comes to us in the morning and says, make me breakfast. Let me watch TV. He's already made his. He's oh, waiting oh, on so his different. parents. Okay, He's waking them up to take him to the track. Oh, okay. And I'm like telling my kids, I'm like, man, I need that commitment from you from baseball. Let's, I'll take you to the gym, but you got to want it. This guy wants it. Writes his own contracts here. Doesn't need an agent. Wow. He's doing wow. it all. The, yep. He actually does the driving, even though he's only in the 10 to 12 class. It's unbelievable. So Drew Adams, he wants it bad. What does he want? He wants the lead. But Deacon Denno, got to give him credit. He actually went quicker than Drew Adams that last time around. He extended the lead to 1.8. It was a 2.067 for Denno and a 2.071. So about half a second quicker was Denno. Drew Adams going to go back to work from second. And Deacon Denno finished third in the first moto, so he is in the hunt, no doubt. Drew Adams, handpicked by Ryan Villapoto, simply based on hair color, likes those redheads, 
Went oh, got, uh, canvas gear. in the canvas gear. Yeah. Yep. And he uh, made the right choice. Now on the inside, he goes right at Deacon Denno. Wow, there goes an entire second and a half lead right there. Just zapped Laying it. Laying the bar down in the dirt as he tries to grease that outside line. He's in good position now. Can he get him over this hill back in Storyland? He cannot. Now, a lot of decisions to make with these ruts back here in the back section of the track. Runs around, way around the outside, and it it looks like it almost worked out for him. Drew Adams, a lot more real estate to cover, but he still finds himself side by side with Deacon Denno. Oh, this is gonna be Woo! fun to watch. Side by side over this jump into the sand, wheel to wheel. There it is. He's got the pass made. Down to the inside, yeah, he's got it complete. Denno would like to square it up, but that rut wouldn't let him do it. And now back in view of the spectators here on the infield. So Drew Adams, lap one was good, lap two a little shaky, lap three, he has brought the thunder and is into the lead. Yeah, he does work down there at Matt Walker's place, Moto X Compounds, where he trains. One of Matt's star pupils for sure. And now he is on his way. This is going to be a good lap. He just wheeled manual right over the braking bumps there. Although we're a great shot of the Ten Commandments. Just, to, just letting you know, they're still there. They're still there. Ten Not Commandments going are still there. Oh, another great shot of uh, another part of the race. Monster display tower yeah. with all the fans. That is still there as Fantastic. well. Oh, and also still there is Drew Adams oh. taking over that tunnel of love. Here it is. Maybe one of our apprentice producers in there called the wrong camera shot. Maybe got him back on track. Oh, no, they're better than the full-time staff, I can oh, tell you. Oh, in your face, Oh, yeah, guys. how about that? Nothing yeah. they can do. Cut they're my listening. Mic. Cut my mic. They can do it. Right past the Monster Energy viewing deck. Look at that, a 204 fastest lap put forth by Drew Adams right there when he made that pass, and wow. he has set sail. Yeah, I would imagine it was just uh, a mistake or just figuring out the lines, but that second lap where he actually lost some ground, and then he chopped about three seconds off of his lap time from laps two to laps three, and now Drew Adams to the number one spot. You know how we sometimes say he's gonna have to find a couple seconds here or there? He just found three seconds in one lap. I just put it on the pit board. Yeah, just Must find three seconds. Okay, faster. why don't you tell me? All I had to do is just see that. All right, so Drew Adams now making his way into Storyland. Seeing a lot of the under portion of that motorcycle when he hits that jump there. The undercarriage, if you will, he goes way around the outside. Now he can pick that preferred line. Doesn't have to really race and worry about the guy in front of him or behind him. He's pulled out enough of a gap. Not protecting. Yeah, he's been using that outside already, but yeah, he can totally open it up now. Going outside to outside is Drew Adams. I heard some of the theories that you had about the track prep. We've had a very raceable track. I know everybody likes it to be as tough and gnarly as possible, but I also feel, hate to inform everybody, but the less heat and humidity we have, oh, absolutely. often the better racing. Yes, guys will fall off at about the 10 minute mark yeah. due to just the heat. Yep. Take that out of the equation. It's just you, the bike, and the track. Last couple of years, we've uh, really been blessed with uh, much cooler weather in a relative sense compared to what we usually get here, and it leads to better racing because everyone can charge, they can stay on the pace. If you make a mistake, you don't completely just lose it all. Uh, and also, as you know, Kevin, having operated racetracks, it makes it that much easier to stay on top of the track prep and keep the track at its optimum when it's not baking. And we also haven't had any rain either, so they've been in that sweet spot the entire time now the comment section being overwhelmed with thanks for jinxing it, uh, to which I say, if I had that kind of power, I would not be standing in the tower <laughs> announcing motocross events if I could change the world's weather. change the weather? Uh, with yeah, my I would voice. Use that to my own benefit. Yes, exactly. It would be sunny at my house all the time, yep. I can tell you that. It's sunny right now, not in Philadelphia, but right here in Tennessee as Drew Adams, the Tennessee kid, is right down the road. Chattanooga, Tennessee is home for him. They went to dirt track racing, was what the dad got into, met his wife there, swept her off her red-headed feet, made a baby. <laughs> they went to Calhoun Supercross, said, we can do this. For he reals? Was, yeah, true old track. Went to Calhoun, they wow. won. Within two races, they were winning on a Z50. He goes, we got to get a better bike, and off we go. Wow. Six Calhoun years Supercross. later, here we are. Building champions. Calhoun Supercross, that's right. Oh, foot off the peg there for Adams. Deke Deno is still second. Brody Barth now up to third. So what has happened to Ken and Hargrove? He was third early. We now have him back in eighth. It is Landon Gibson. Meanwhile, he has rallied. I saw Gibson around eighth early in the moto. Gibson is up to fourth. And the Wyatt first time, Bass is top five. Go ahead. I was going to say, I haven't really talked much about Seth Dennis. And he's back in about the number six spot. He finished fourth in that first moto. So Seth Dennis having to claw his way. You know, it's just quiet. And then, boom, the last few laps, they hop into the top ten. You're like, oh, there they are. 
Yeah, a couple of uh, rides like that. You also mentioned uh, a, a couple of... In the other class, I think he finished out of the top 10 one of the motos, but it turned out he actually had a flat tire. Ah. Uh, Seth Dennis. Okay. So it's been a tough week for him. If I recall right, though, I think Drew Adams had one of those types of weeks last year at this event where things just did not go his way. Speed was there, but the results were not. So it could be Drew Adams here to shine. Uh, as we watch a couple of good battles here. Uh, so I mentioned Wyatt Bass is fifth. Chase Lawton, sixth. Seth Dennis, seventh. Cannon Hargrove, eighth. Clark Robbins is ninth. And Colby Goff rounds out the top ten. Yeah, we do have Canyon Richards in this class. He's the, the number 31 rider. And in fact, I do not see Canyon Richards 10. on our radar he here. He finished ninth in the first moto. Yeah, and I don't see him. And I thought you saw him on the line. Uh, I said his name because he was top 10. Oh, okay. We were just reading off the previous moto yeah. results. So not yeah. sure uh, what has happened to Canyon Richards now running the number 31. But we do not see him in the results nope. spread Nowhere. right now. And uh, a couple other riders who've had good motos. Caden Dudney, only one lap complete in this one. Caden Dudney, one of the other classes running up front. Uh, he's had a tough one as well. He is listed in 41st place. Caden Dudney, battle we're watching right now is Bro Bro Brody Barth on the number 26. And Landon Gibson, who has been on a roll, started about eighth, ninth place. He is now in fourth, and he wants a moto medal. Clearly, he got the word that it will be me, Jason Wygant, doing the podium interviews. Oh, wow. And no longer Rodney Tomlin. Oh, so and he I wants think it to is jump obvious. It's changed can, the way yes, his approach. You can see the motivation now has changed. That now that they know they're not going to talk to Rodney any longer. There was one class where every time you got inside that top five, you would just, the bike would explode or people would crash. They were doing it on purpose to throw themselves out of contention, to have to talk to the cigarette breath filled Rodney Tomlin. They did not want to go that, there. They did not want to go there. Yep. He, he it told me he went on, down. The, on the pit board, watch Rodney. But yes. see now, look at how hard they're fighting oh, they for this third place spot. Great point. He Brody Barth and Landon Gibson. It is wheel to wheel. Gibson going to try to seal it on the inside. Barth fighting back on the 26. Fighting for their chance to talk to you. Oh, that's what all the training is for. All the sacrifice, all the months to get here. It's just to have a chance to have a conversation with me for three minutes on the podium and also to get a medal and maybe some sponsorship and but maybe change your life. The real motivation is. Yes, yes. So congratulations out to you, Landon Gibson, putting it into the number three position. But look at, hey, look at Brody Barth. Barth, he doesn't want to let him go. No, not, not he at does all. not he, want to miss his chance to talk to me on the podium. He well, wants that third place spot back. If you want to be charitable and maybe talk to them on their way as they're under the tent, say a little quick hello to them. Might I'll at least give the head nod. Don't want to rock star anybody. <laughs> Don't want to be too cool for school. Sure. So there's Landon Gibson. He's now fought himself into a top three position. He will get a rare and coveted chance to talk to the incomparable Jason Wygant as he is back calling the race in his car. He's not even here. He's got the technology. You're not even here with us. You're in that car still. No, no. I am just driving. I'm watching the feed via racertv.com while I'm driving. Might have to put the phone down a time or two if I see some of the Tennessee State Patrol out there. You're not supposed to be watching videos on your right, phone while right. you're driving. But duty calls, everybody. And we are just about at the five-minute mark here, so we've got just a few more laps before we'll see that two-lap board. i got to say, it is remarkable the technology. Racer TV was in the airport watching, got in an Uber, watched in the Uber. We did a quick uh, American Flat Track TV show today. Got back in the Uber, still watching the show. Went through the airport, still watching the show. I didn't, of course, spring for the Wi-Fi on the plane, so I missed not. about an hour's worth of motos there. But it is amazing to have this technology at our fingertips. You and I have talked about it many times. You've been coming here since the 90s, yeah. and it was always this thing you heard about. But unless you came here, you never had really a clue of what it really was. And now the whole world can watch while they're riding in an Uber. Yeah, the, even the property has fought the mystique. Like, the property has tried to keep cell service down to a Amazing. minimum. Amazing. It has fought it for years. Yes. Everywhere in America has service, but it, it, there's just a handful of spots you can get it. But it, it was. It was this legendary place. You would hear about it. You never saw guys that show. You, you just knew nothing about anybody, and you would all just show up here on the ranch. Some guy from California, you're like, wow, I never heard of you because we didn't have the Internet. Cycle News was primitive at best. 
yeah, you would see a few photos, but the idea that you could stop whatever you're doing, wherever you are, on your phone, and just watch every moto from Loretta Lynn's is about as mind-boggling as inventing. There's two things. Inventing the phone and being able to watch Racer TV on it. Those things are equal Crazy. at the top. Crazy. Hey, I was wondering this. This is awesome. We got Haley Deegan joining us in the uh, tower here. Usually get to see you down to the podium at some point. I'm like, you're getting busier and busier. I didn't know if we'd get you, but you did come down today to watch your brother race. Yes, I did. I had to be here. I feel like every time I come to Lourdes, <laughs> it's a guaranteed win for Hayden. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He hasn't lost without me here. So, um, so you were here a couple of, like an hour ago when so he won? I was here. All yes, right, yes, you did yes. I got here last <laughs> night, so I was able to hang out with him, spend some family time. You know, I'm worried. Uh, you are... You are in the professional ranks now. You're in the truck series now, right? Yes. And uh, Hayden is on his way. Maybe a year or two, he could be racing professional supercross. Then it's going to be all weekend activity for both of you. How have you folks broken this down? Who's going to go where? How's this going to work it's if you're both crazy. on a Saturday night? Oh, man. It's so crazy. And I think that's something that we're going to have to figure out okay. as it comes. But I live on my own on the East Coast, so... Uh, a little bit far away from my family oh that boy. lives in California, so it makes it a little difficult for everyone to go to everybody's races. But right now, at least Hayden's not racing every single weekend yes. like he will in the future. And so that's something that makes it a little bit easier at the moment, but still, on the East Coast, it's a full-time job for me, so it's hard to get away. Uh, so Haley Deegan up here in the booth with us, yes, going through the ranks now in uh, NASCAR. Uh, but how many years have you come here? At one point, you were just going as a sister to your, your brother that raced? First year, uh, Hayden raced Loretta's. I was here. So, All right, yeah. 50 class. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been here for a long time, so I've definitely <laughs> I've uh, made my way around, seen everything around here, and I love at Loretta's. It's become almost like a little family vacation. We don't get many, many times to go on vacations throughout the year, so it's where we all get to come to, together as a family, and everyone around us and all our whole crew gets to be here. Uh, how is the transition at the Truck Series? How's that going for you on the NASCAR side? It's good. It's yep. good. It's really good. I enjoy it. I have so much fun, obviously. I'm learning a lot every single race, and I still have a lot more to learn, and I think we're going to make some uh, great, great finishes, and we're making a lot of development, and I feel like that's my big focus right now is just learning and uh, uh, being like a sponge and absorbing as much as I can, and so hopefully we'll get some more good finishes this year to finish out strong. Well, I feel like both, with, uh, not just with your dad, but then you and, and your brother, uh, I, you guys have the vlog and you guys are really popular and all that. But I feel like on the racing side, you don't want it to be like this flash in the pan. There's a one great moment. You're building the long game, playing it patient. So if people are like, oh, let's look at the results from the first eight truck races, you're not trying to base your career on what you have now. It's exactly. where you're going to get to in the future. Right now, yeah. it's like in the building phase. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how it's going to turn out, the finished product. But okay. <laughs> right now, we're in the building phase. And obviously, I want it to turn out as best as it can. But there's a lot that I'm learning every single race. And it takes time. It takes a lot of development. Racing against guys that have been racing the truck series longer than I've been alive. And so <laughs> they got some experience over me. It's really hard to be experienced. And that just comes with time. And uh, I'm just going to guess that they would probably not want to see you come in there and beat them, these guys who are making a living in that truck series for like 20 some years. They don't want some rookie coming in and putting it to them. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little <laughs> tough in that aspect. Yeah. I've had my fair share of feuds, <laughs> but okay. I think it's just mostly focusing on my goal and what I'm trying to accomplish every single Sometimes that gets tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why Watching some of the stuff you do, look, your family has a motocross background. I've seen you tool around on a pit bike. You know your way around at two <laughs> wheels as well, right? <laughs> I could still, I could still get better, but I okay. know how to ride a little bit. Don't quote right. me on that. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, well, we appreciate uh, first of all coming to visit, and also it's cool, like with all these experiences you have coming to this event. It's like uh, you're a little infiltrator you'll tell the nascar people how cool dirt bikes are uh, what a great family I'm sport the middle it is. person <laughs> yeah we and we, we it helps this sport i think grow to have that connection to what you're doing yeah, so we appreciate it hayden does a great job with social media he absolutely kills it i've seen probably 50 percent of the kids here in danger boy hats <laughs> oh so I'm yeah like, why aren't you guys selling merch here and they're like oh man like it's a lot of work i'm like i will sell it for yeah. you <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just, it's funny to see. And Hayden has such a great fan base of people that support him and such a positive vibe around him. So he's killing it. I want to see how much merchandise you could sell if we say we have Danger Boy merchandise for sale. And it's actually you, Haley Deegan, who's selling it I'm to I'm going to sell people. mine there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see who yeah, can sell the most. Sure. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for joining us up here. Uh, where are you headed to this weekend? Hey, to Watkins Glen, truckers. Oh. Yeah, I actually leave in about 45 minutes. So yeah, so we appreciate the, the time. Have you driven the Glen before? No, I haven't. It's going to oh. be my first time there. <laughs> uh, be careful. I mean, it gets crazy up there. <laughs> I, know, I know. I've seen my fair share of videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watkins Glen is a legend on the NASCAR uh, tour, right? It's the Unadilla if you want to put it in motocross terms they're not even that far from each other so thanks for stopping by yeah. it's cool you're never too cool to come hang out with us motocross no folk. problem at all <laughs> <laughs> all right it's Haley Deegan go. yep appreciate it thank you uh, and we're about to wrap this up with Drew Adams Haley's got to head to the airport but that was cool for her to stop by up here certainly one of the big names uh if you didn't know anything about motocross, if you didn't know anything about Brian Deegan's accomplishments or what Hayden Deegan is accomplishing now, you would still be impressed at what she's doing coming through the NASCAR ranks. But when you marry all those things together, and we've got quite a story building, Drew Adams is building a similar story for himself with the lead right now, putting the finishing touches on it. That means I'll head it down to the podium. We've got more goodies coming up into this tower. I don't know what is going on today. Thursday is the day. I've got a full-on buffet up here to dig into. I gotta head down to the tower, or head out of the tower, down to the podium, and we'll talk to Drew Adams, Deacon Denno, and Landon Gordon, the great come from behind run to get to the number three spot. So the checker flag will fly, and it is Drew Adams. He goes 1-1, and he will have a word with Jason Wygant, there are your results. It's Adams, Denno, Gibson, one, two, three, Barth is fourth. Lawton round out your top five as we put the finishing touches on the 85, 10 to 12. Awesome to see Haley Deegan up here in the tower with us. We're getting ready to go with our open pro sport class here. That will be the next moto. Jason Wygant will give us the lowdown on the podium as we go down and check in with our top three from the 85, 10 to 12. Jason Wygant. No changes there in that final lap. Landon Gibson, as we mentioned, had a big battle with Barth to take that third place position and grab the bronze. Deacon Denno got to lead some laps. Solid performance, ended up in the number two spot. And Drew Adams putting 1-1 one, one on the board in the first two motos of this 85, 10 to 12. We're gonna get all the swag dialed in, the towel, the hat, that's good. But what's great is this. Let's hand over a gold medal to Tennessee's own Drew Adams. Had to work a little bit for that one. Had to make up some uh, ground and make a pass to get that lead. Um, yeah, I locked bars with some kids coming off the start straight and I had to make some passes on the first lap. Deegan led some of the race and I'm proud of him. Good job. Um, just try to get around him as quick as I could and then uh, try not get tired. <laughs> uh, how do you avoid getting nervous and thinking of all the things that could go wrong? You're sitting on a 1 1. You got to get it dialed in Moto 3. Do you just try to block all that out before the third Moto? Yeah, I've been in this position many a times and it's just. It's nerve wracking, you know? Yep. It's. Uh, quite the rumble. Yep. Hey, that's what we're going to learn here at Loretta's. That's what it's all about. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, dad, Jesus for keeping me safe, uh, my sister, my dog, my grandparents, um, Team Green Kawasaki, Monster Energy Pro Circuit, Mount Walker's Mother's Compound, Renthal, Henson, Throttle Syndicate, Oakley, Bell, uh, Canvas MX for always hooking me up with Sweet Gear, uh, Arma, uh, everybody else. There it is. Let's hear it for the number 33, Drew Adams. Big performance there. Puts himself in the uh, points position that he wants going into the final moto. We'll see how that one turns out a little later in the week. We will bring up our silver medalist. And like we said, got to lead some laps of the number 19. Let's hear it for Deacon Denno. Deacon Denno. 
How'd that moto go for you there, Deacon? It was good. Um, I got off to an awesome start. I don't know if I got the whole shot or not, but I know I came out out front. So, yeah, it was hard. I, I got to lead some laps, felt good. Uh, Drew was ripping. Um, and once he got me, I just, my, my throat started to get really dry and I just couldn't breathe. So, it was all right, Moto. You'll take that second. Who do you want to thank, Deacon? My mom, my dad, Jesus Christ, keep me safe. Uh, Taylor Painter at Tapped House, JM Racing, um, 60 Helmets, Pro Tabor, 100%, O'Neill, and everybody else, thank you. Deacon Denno, second place finish in 85, 10 to 12. And it was Landon Gibson who rolled up with the uh, hole shot. And hey, Deacon Denno, Deacon did get the hole shot. Sorry, <laughs> Landon Gibson was third in the moto. Deacon Denno, you did get the Stasek hole shot award, so we will give you the photo of that. He wasn't even sure himself. We have verification. Thanks to Stasic, the stability cycle. Great way for kids to learn how to ride. And now we'll bring our third place finisher on up. Thank you, Deacon. Let's hear it for the bronze medalist, Landon Gibson. I had you in like eighth or ninth place. How'd you get up to third? You made it happen. I just charged the whole way, didn't look back, and just rode my own race. You proud of, proud of that come from behind effort? Yes, sir. Who do you want to thank? Jesus Christ for keeping me safe, my mom, my dad, Luke for the suspension, it's running killer, Dunlop for the tires, 100% uh, Bell, Answer, Poppy for taking me to training, uh, Moto X Compound, and everybody else who I forgot to thank. There it is. Let's hear it from Landon Gibson. Proud effort.